The topic is dental implants. Now, dental implants nowadays have become one of the popular treatment modality in in uh, dental practice now they have been re they have been constantly i guess maybe uh, booming in replacing your fixed partial dentures now let's go into a little bit detail about your dental implants the main breakthrough uh, came up in 1952 with a startling discovery which was made by your uh, pen ingwer brain mark Per Ingwer brain mark in about 1952, the phenomenon of or with the phenomenon of osseo integration. So that was the time when they decided that titanium is the ma material of choice. Now, how do you define an implant? An implant can be defined as a graft or an insert which is set firmly or deeply into or onto the alveolar processes that may be prepared for its insertion. A brain mark and its associates describe the relationship between the titanium and bone for which they coined the term osseointegration. integration. What is osseointegration? integration? It's nothing but a direct structural and a functional connection between the ordered living bone and the surface of the load carrying uh, implant. What are the various biomaterials that have been used in order uh, to uh, re uh, replace or to replace a tooth in the form of dental implants? There have been various metals which have been tried, an alloy of metals. You have your inner, in, in, inert ceramics, the calcium phosphate ceramics, your bioactive glass and biodegradable ceramics. And apart from that, various polymeric substances have also been tried. But the best material of choice would be titanium and its alloy, titanium 6 aluminum for vanadium meaning to say 90% of the alloy is composed of titanium with 6% of aluminium and 4% of vanadium. Now why has titanium been the uh, has been selected the best material of choice because of its certain important properties that it is an inert metal it is biocompatible it has excellent resistance to corrosion and it has favorable physical properties that it has low specific gravity high heat resistance and high strength comparable to with that of your stainless steel. Now, how do you classify dental implants you can classify them based on the shape and form and surface characteristics based on the shape and form you have your endosteal implants, subperiosteal implants, transosteal, intramucosal or inserts or submucosal inserts. Based on the shape you can classify them with the shape of the root or the root form implants or the bladed implants. Based on the surface characteristics you have plasma sprayed, you have titanium plasma sprayed that is a sand blasting kind of implant and then laser induced surface roughening and hydroxyapatite coated titanium implants. When do you indicate an implant therapy? The various indications either in an edentulous patient or a partially edentulous patient. A completely edentulous patient either you want to uh, go for a complete over uh, you you want to give an implant supported prosthesis or an implant supported denture in an edentulous maxilla or mandible or partially edentulous patients wherein you are trying to replace the free end edentulous situation suppose you have a distal extension uh, edentulous area and you 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 can't have any other therapy other than just your removal or a cast partial denture then implant would be the best uh, choice for those patients in a multiple missing teeth and even in a single tooth loss your in your implants can be indicated. What are the absolute contraindications of placing an implant? Well, you, one, the most important would be when the patient is having an uncontrolled diabetes mellitus and then long term, patient is on a long term immunosuppressant drug therapy, diseases of the connective tissue, blood dyscrasias and coagulopathies, your regional uh, malignancies, any metastatic kind of diseases, your previous radiation or patient was on a radiotherapy of the jaws which might further lead into post-surgical osteoradionecrosis and then alcohol or drug addiction, severe psychological disorders. What are the biological considerations of implant? Once you've placed an implant, what are the things that you should consider? The first one would be the soft tissue implant interface and the bone implant interface. If you see the soft tissue implant interface, you see the mucosal tissue around an implant. It's almost similar to that of a normal, around that of a normal uh, natural tooth. Your, uh, your, uh, the tissue is covered by keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. And then you have a thick band of connective tissue with a lot of collagen fibers. And then you have the intact epithelium in uh, your epithelium in case of your junctional 
and your uh, uh, your junctional epithelium is similar it's in pattern with that of your uh, the one you see with that of your natural tooth and then it is adhered with the uh, with your uh, it or it is attached to your uh, implant surface but uh, by your basal lamina and your hemidesmosomes sulcus you have the similar kind of a sulcus that you have in your around your natural tooth and then it is lined by your sulcular epithelium it's continuous apically with the junctional epithelium if you see the collagen fibers the pattern of collagen fibers in case of your uh, because you don't have a periodontal ligament in your uh, uh, implant but and you don't have a cementum there therefore the collagen fibers are arranged in a parallel fashion when compared to that of a natural tooth wherein the collagen fibers are arranged in bundles in a uh, in a uh, perpendicular fashion to your root cementum you see the bone implant interface you have three kinds of interfaces that have been noticed you can either have a fibro osseous interface your osseo integration or a bioactive integration what do you mean by fibro osseous integration it is defined as tissue to implant contact by interposition of a healthy dense collagenous tissue between the implant and the bone interface now, it is not the one which is desirable it's not the desirable form of interface that we want what we want is osseo integration you know osseo integration is a direct structural and a functional connection between your ordered living bone and that of the surface of your load carrying implant there's one more which is called as a bioactive integration it is defined as an integration which results results by a physical chemical interaction between your collagen of the bone and hydroxyapatite crystals of the implants but what we want is your osseo integration Let's come on, move on to the uh, your uh, surgical procedures which are employed. You can have a one-stage implant procedure or a two-stage implant procedure. When you mean uh, by a two-stage implant procedure is one, the first stage would be your surgical stage, wherein you load the implant, you place the implant into the bone, and then the, you wait for a period. You keep a key, uh, healing period in case of your uh, mandible for about three to four months, and for maxilla about six months, uh, four to six months, and then the second stage you call the patient and then you load the prosthesis whereas for your one stage implant surgery you place the implant and place the abutment and send back send the patient back home so that would complete your entire uh, 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 stages of implant in just one single stage now what is how is the healing pattern after the implant surgery you have an early phase and you have a late phase in the early phase it is where your entire your uh, the area is filled with a blood clot and then you have a fibro network and then it is replaced by granulation tissue new fibroblasts and new uh, angiogenesis is taking place and then initially your uh, implant surface is detected by the body as a patho or as a foreign material so there's going to be an increase in the number of uh, inflammatory cells around that area but over a period of time once the bone forming cells start that is the osteoblast start proliferating and start forming the new bone the macrophages or the inflammatory cells picture comes down now, when you see the late phase of uh, implant uh, healing of the osseous healing now here the new bone is getting replaced and there is going to be a kind of a direct contact of the bone with that of the implant surface now some reports have shown that it is you don't have a direct exact direct contact between the bone and the implant but when you see under a electron microscope they have visualized a kind of a layer or a glycoprotein layer which is present between your your uh, bone surface and the implant surface you can call it as a biofilm now what are the peri implant now that we have uh, considered about you're finished about the surgical how the healing happens now you need you also need to know that that they can arise some complications with respect to your implants now you have two types of peri implant diseases one is your peri implant mucositis and then peri implant itis now the peri implant mucositis meaning some inflammatory changes which are just confined to your surrounding soft tissues without any kind of a radiographic evidence of bone loss when you see your peri implantitis it means to say it is a progressive peri implant bone loss in conjunction with the inflammatory pattern in your uh, soft tissues now it begins at the coronal portion of the implant and then while more apical portion of the implant still remains or show integrated now you can actually appreciate the amount of bone loss and the pattern of bone loss most of the time an angular pattern of bone loss that is noticed in a radiograph
the implant is not clinically mobile at this stage but still in the later stages when the bone loss has progressed to involve even the complete implant osseo integrated area then you can notice the mobility what are the signs and symptoms or the radiographic and the clinical signs and these include the color typical color changes of the soft tissue that the peri implant mucosa it can be vary from uh, bluish red to magenta and then you have the smooth shiny surface because of the inflammatory edema and then you have bleeding on probing pocket formation it can have suppuration and even some kind of a swelling or an enlargement of the peri of the peri implant uh, some kind of an enlargement of the peri implant uh, tissues presence of local factors mobility and you find a radiographic bone loss how do you diagnose clinical signs and uh, through using your periodontal probes usually they prefer the uh, plastic probes in order to detect even if you want to instrument the implant surface you have to use your plastic tips or plastic instruments which are specially designed for your implant purposes apart from that your radiographs include your iopas your intraoral uh, periapical radiographs your opgs which will determine or which will show you the signs of radiographic bone loss how do you treat your peri implantitis you either do the, the most of the times what when you when you have an initial stages of bone loss or a peri implantitis which has set in most of the time the reasons can be because of a, either an overloading or maybe the depending on the number of implants that you have placed or many any kind of an occlusal uh, 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 corrections which are needed so if you if you can resolve or all these problems that is if you can reduce the number of implants or in, sorry increase the number of implants or maybe redesign the prosthesis or do the occlusal corrections the uh, bone loss can be arrested at an early stage now or else you can go about doing your anti infective therapy that is either you can um, use your uh, sub uh, antimicrobial uh, agents or maybe you can deliver some local drug delivery systems which will try to uh, decrease the microbial load in the area and make the area more uh, sterile so that your inflammatory changes will regress and apart from that maybe a uh, best use of uh, chlorhexidine irrigation and 0.2% of chlorhexidine mouthwashes can be advised to the patients apart from that the next mode of therapy would be a surgical therapy where you can open the surgical site of the implant and then debride the area uh, with which is uh, which is infected and then probably think of a regenerative procedure and try to build up the lost alveolar bone uh, or lost uh, bone and then the last one would be on a periodic maintenance visits what are the oral hygiene aids which are specially available for these implant uh, uh, processes and implant uh, for the implant maintenance now toothbrushes with soft uh, rounded bristles are usually advised uh, which can be easily used under the surfaces of the implants uh, without getting easily damaged and then toothpaste should be uh, minimally abrasive and uh, the cleaning tooth cleaning procedures should be conducted by rinsing or brushing with chlorhexidine gauze strips or super floss are effective for cleaning interproximal areas and irrigators can also be used as adjunctive aids now that would conclude the entire uh, session on dental implants thank you